Today's lesson is called the Trans-Siberian Railway, a journey through time. Hello everyone, my name is Jeff. My name is Roger, and here in the month of February, we're talking about traveling. And in February, of course, it's really, really cold in some parts of the world. Here in Taiwan, just so-so. Maybe it gets a little cold up here in the north, but for the most part, Taiwan is pretty mild, pretty warm during the winter. But hey, maybe you'd like to feel what it's like to be really, really cold. You might want to consider going to Siberia. Which of course is in Russia, and while you're there, you might as well hop on the Trans-Siberian Railway. It will be a journey through time. A journey through time, and also a journey all the way across Russia, which is a gigantic country. So you'll get to see pretty much all that Russia has to offer. Will you see all of it? No, but boy, will you see. A whole lot. Anyways, folks, let's go ahead and take a short break. But when we come back, we'll start reading our article on the Trans-Siberian Railway. The Trans-Siberian Railway: A Journey Through Time. Arguably the most famous of all the historic rail lines, the Trans-Siberian Railway crosses most of Russia, connecting Moscow to the Pacific port of Vladivostok. Built between 1891 and 1916, the line brought huge economic benefits to the country upon completion, and still provides a unique, inspiring travel experience to this day. 大家好，标题中我们看到名词 railway， 指铁路、铁道。举例来说 ，The kids were told not to walk along the railway. 那群孩子被告诫不要沿着铁路行走。接着，我们看到单字 arguably 这个字是副词，只可以说是，很可能是。像是 Ted is arguably the best athlete in our school. Ted 可说是我们学校最厉害的运动员。或是 This is arguably the most groundbreaking computer game of all time. 这很可能是史上最具有开创性的电玩。再来，我们看到名词 completion 指完成、结束。例如。Upon completion of your exam, please pass it to the teacher and quietly leave the room. 考卷写完后，请交给老师，并安静地离开教室。或是 It will be many months before the completion of the building. 距离这栋建筑完工还有好几个月的时间。We're talking about the Trans-Siberian Railway. Now, a railway is very similar in meaning to a railroad. Basically, they're the same thing. It just depends on what the individual country wants to call it. Here in Taiwan, of course, you've got the Taiwan Railways or Taitia, as it's called in Chinese. And of course, I guess you could call it the Taiwan Railroad if you want to, but that's not what it's called in the United States. Of course, we've got、uh, different railways and. Railroads like uh, the uh, Burlington Northern Railroad, for example, which goes through my part of the country. That's a railroad. I would say that's more for delivering freight than transporting passengers. Anyways, arguably the most famous of all the historic rail lines, the Trans-Siberian Railway crosses most of Russia, connecting Moscow to the Pacific port. Of Vladivostok, I like to do the Russian accent. I say that again. We go from Moscow to Vladivostok.、Uh, that's what you do when you take the Trans-Siberian Railroad. Actually, I think that was a pretty terrible Russian accent, but I just like to do it. I wish I could do the Russian accent so people wouldn't、uh, talk to me in English all the time. But in any case, here we could talk about things that have to do with Russia. But of course, this railway is one of the most famous things. Yes, indeed, it could be argued that it is the most famous of all the historic rail lines. So, argue. 
arguably, or you could say it could be argued, or you could say this. Other people might argue against you about this. They might debate you on this. But hey, there's a very good chance that you'll win an argument if you claim that this is one of the most famous historic rail lines in the world. The Trans-Siberian Railway, and it's probably famous because it's so long. It crosses most of Russia. Russia, by land, is the largest country in the world, and I believe it crosses several time zones there. And it takes seven days to ride this train. So indeed, it is a very long railway. It is quite the trip. Anyways, built between 1891 and 1916, the line brought huge economic benefits to the country upon completion, and still provides a unique, inspiring travel experience to this day. Yes, for a very long time, Russia was this huge place. That wasn't really connected by one single railway. Let's say this is before the time of roads and stuff like that. There wasn't anything that connected that entire country, and this country is huge and filled with resources. So, someone thought, you know what? Let's go ahead and build a railway, kind of connect the country in one single way. And you know what? This will do big things for us. Economically, we'll be able to bring all of those resources, let's say, from the west to the east, and trade them and make all sorts of money. So, yes, once they finished this particular railway, upon its completion, boy, did it bring those economic benefits to Russia. And now, to this very day, it's still pretty cool. It provides a unique, inspiring travel experience to this very. Day. Yes, if something is unique, by the way, it's one of a kind, or it's extremely special. Indeed, it's one of a kind. You can't find it anywhere else in the world. It does provide a unique travel experience. I've known quite a few people. Who have ridden on the Trans-Siberian Railway, and of course, it's going to give you huge bragging rights. If it ever comes up in a conversation, you can talk about it, and you will be the life of the party for sure. So plan your trip, and indeed, it will be a wonderful experience that you will never forget. Okay, let's move on now to the next part of our lesson. We'll listen to it first, and then we'll talk about it. The railway is a triumph of engineering, but construction was no easy task. Workers had to dig tunnels through mountains and build bridges over 16 major rivers. The result was a railway more than 9,000 kilometers long that amazed the world and became a source of national pride. Today, it's still the world's longest railway, spanning eight time zones and taking seven full days to travel. 第二部分，我们看到单字 triumph 这个字是名词，指非凡的成功、杰出的成就。像是 the athlete's greatest triumph was winning an Olympic gold medal。那位运动员最大的成就是赢得一面奥运金牌。另外，这个字也可以当动词，意思是获胜。例如 ，Kenny hopes to triumph at the tennis match this weekend。Kenny 希望能在这周的羽球比赛中获胜。再补充这个字的形容词。Triumphant, T R I U M P H A N T. Triumphant, 指因胜利而喜悦的，得意洋洋的。举例来说 ，There were triumphant celebrations throughout the country to celebrate the World Cup win. 该国处处都是庆祝赢得世界杯的狂欢庆祝活动。接下来我们看到名词 engineering， 指工程、工程学。像是 A lot of original thought went into the engineering of this building. 这栋建筑的工程纳入了很多创新的点子，或是 I studied engineering because I enjoy learning how machines work. 我因为喜欢学习机器如何运作而研读工程学。Okay, in the first paragraph of our article, something might have stood out to you all. It says here that this railway was built between 1891 and 1916. Okay, so do the math there. 
It took 25 years to build this thing. Now, I know that Russia is a big country, but still, that is a long period of time. So, yes, the railway is a triumph of engineering, but construction was no easy task. It took 25 years, and boy, did they have to do a whole lot of hard work to make sure that this thing actually came to be. By the way, it says here, the railway is a triumph of engineering. What do they mean by that there, Roger? Well, a triumph is a great achievement. So you could use this word to talk about anything that is a great achievement. Beethoven's Ninth Symphony was a triumph in classical music. Or we could say that Taiwan's democracy is a triumph in democracies around the world, etc. So here we've got the uh, triumph of engineering considering the Trans-Siberian Railway. I guess you could say the Shuesui here in Taiwan. The Snow Mountain Tunnel is a triumph of engineering. You get the idea. But this a particular railway took many, many years to build. Workers had to dig tunnels through mountains and build bridges over 16 major rivers. Remember, this was taking place back in the early part of the 20th century, so they probably did not have the kind of technology we have today in which we can uh, dig tunnels rather quickly with those uh, huge machines. Back then, they probably used dynamite and uh, traditional digging techniques to burrow through those mountains there. They built tunnels. They dug tunnels through mountains. And then there were 16 major rivers. We're not talking about little streams or little brooks or something. These were big, wide rivers that they had to build bridges over. Now, the result was a railway more than 9,000 kilometers long that amazed the world and became a source of of national pride. So when they finally finished this thing, people were really, really happy about it. They were very proud of what Russia had been able to accomplish. And today, I should say, it's still the world's longest railway, spanning eight time zones and taking seven full days to travel How about that? All right, folks, with that, it's time for us to take a short break, but don't go away. When we come back, we'll be wrapping up the first part of our article on the Trans-Siberian Railway. The railway was originally intended to transport goods across Russia, thereby expanding trade with East Asia. This, it was argued, would contribute to Russia's growing political and economic power. While it remains an important transport link, carrying 30% of Russia's yearly exports, the railway has also become an increasingly popular tourist attraction. Needless to say, the majority of passengers are locals traveling across Russia, but the route attracts plenty of foreigners too. One look at the photographs these travelers have taken, and it's easy to see why this is the case. Thereby, 这个字是副词，指从而、因而。举例来说 ，Ellen scored a goal in the last minute, thereby winning the game. Ellen 在最后一分钟得分，因而赢得了比赛。最后，我们看到名词 route， 这个字也可以念作 route， 指路线、航线。像是 ，We need to take a different route because this one is closed. 我们需要换条路线走，因为这一条封闭了。另外，这个字也可以当动词，指设定、安排路线、引导。例如 ，The police officer routed traffic away from the intersection where the accident occurred. 警察引导车流避开发生事故的十字路口。或是 ，The new automated phone system will route inquiries to the most appropriate staff. 新的自动电话系统会将询问转给最适合的员工。
Okay, the third part of our lesson begins right now. You might be asking, why did the Russians bother to build this railway? Couldn't they just have been happy staying back in Moscow or in Vladivostok and、uh, you know getting their vodka and、uh, drinking it all day long and stuff like that? You know that's what Russians do and stuff like that. But in any case, here the Russians decided that they needed to build this railway, and it was originally intended to transport goods across Russia. There. Thereby expanding trade with East Asia, so that was the original intent. Okay, here we've got the verb to intend to do something. That just refers to your general plan, what you want to do, what your plan is. So it was originally planned or intended to transport goods across Russia. So they had various things in the eastern part of Russia, and they wanted to send them over to the western part of Russia. And then vice versa, stuff from the west to the east, or from the central part of Russia to the west to the east to Korea, Japan, China, Vietnam, etc. Okay, so there would be more trade with Asia if things worked out. That's the idea here. Now, this it was argued would contribute to Russia's growing political and economic power. So there you go. If the plan worked out. If there was expanded trade with East Asia and stuff like that, well, this would contribute or add to Russia's growing political and economic power. Now, while it remains an important transport link. Carrying 30% of Russia's yearly exports, the railway has also become an increasingly popular tourist attraction. So maybe it was more important in the past than it is today, but it's still very important. It carries 30% of Russia's yearly exports, which go to the Far East there. But it's also a popular tourist attraction. Of course, you probably have friends. Who have actually taken the train as a passenger on the Trans-Siberian Railway? And of course, when this nasty coronavirus finally leaves us alone, we might have the chance to go travel and,、uh, you know, indeed be a passenger on the Trans-Siberian Railway someday. Anyways, needless to say, or it's obvious. The majority of passengers are locals traveling across Russia, but the route attracts plenty of foreigners too. So yes, if you are a Russian and you need to get from one place to another, you can use this particular railway. But foreigners can use it too. They can ride it all seven days and see pretty much all of Russia. I think that's pretty cool. It says here, yes, the route attracts plenty of foreigners too. And when we're talking about a route, we're talking about a well-defined way that takes you somewhere. Exactly the route. Some people say route.、Uh, both pronunciations are acceptable. You might be asked by somebody, "Gee, I want to go to Jai. What's the fastest route there? If I don't want to take the freeway, what's another way to get there, for example?" And so, yes, it's a route that attracts lots of foreigners. And one look at the photographs these travelers have taken, and it's easy to see why this is the case, why this is true, why this is the way it is. Okay, that brings us to the end of our lesson for today. Hopefully, we have inspired you to take a trip on the Trans-Siberian Railway. And、uh, before you can make those ticket reservations, we need to hear once again from our Chinese teacher. Hello, 同学，大家好，我是 Hanny。我们来看今天的文法重点。课文第一部分写到，西伯利亚铁路建于一八九一年至一九一六年间，那么一竣工就为这个国家带来庞大的经济利益。好，文中是用到 upon completion 来表达一完成就怎么样，一竣工就怎么样。好，其中这个介系词 upon 它就可以用来表达一怎么样就怎么样，后面是要接名词或动名词。那么 upon 也可以用 on 来替换。好，在使用的时候 ，upon 或者是 on 加上名词或动名词，这个部分呢可以摆在主要子句之前或是之后，只是要特别注意，如果我们是搭配动名词 upon 或是 on 加动名词的话，这个动作的主词必须跟主要子句的主词一致哦。
。举例来说 ，Upon smelling the food, I got hungry. 一闻到食物的味道，我就肚子饿了。那虽然前半句这个 Upon smelling the food 没有主词，可是我们都会知道说它是要表达我一闻到食物味道。我就肚子饿了。前后两个动作的主词是同一个人。好，读到课文第三部分的第二句，有人认为这条铁路呢，将促使俄罗斯不断增长的政治及经济实力。好，那么文中用到一个单字 contribute， 它表示促成、促使。我们来学习它的字首字根。好 ，tribute 这个部分呢，本身是一个单字，可以用来表达贡品、贡献、尊崇、敬意的意思。那么它当字。字根则是有给予分配的意思。好，在 contribute 这个字当中，它的 c o n 这个字首表示一起 ，tribute 表示给予贡献。那把两个部分组合在一起，一起贡献，一起给予，应该可以联想到 contribute， 它有捐献、做出贡献，或是为什么什么来贡献的意思。好，顺便补充几个有相同字根的单字。第一个要补充的是 attribute, a t t r i b u t e。它的字首 a t 是来自 a d 这个字首，表示朝向。那么 tribute 表示给予分配。当我们朝向某人或某事物，把这个功劳或是过错分给那个人事物，其实就是可以联想到说。Attribute 它有归因于或是归咎于什么什么的意思了。那这个字还可以用来表达把某种特质归属于什么什么。好，那它如果当名词的话，就可以用来表达特质。那这时候它是念作 attribute。好，再来补充第二个是 distribute。它的字首 d i s 有个别分开的意思，那么 tribute 表示分配给予。当我们个别去分配物品，一个一个给，就不难联想到 distribute 有分配分发的意思。第三个补充的是 retribution, r e t r i b u t i o n. 好，它的字首 r e 表示往回。那么这个 t r i b u t 就是来自 tribute， 表示分配给予。那么 i o n 是名词字尾。那其实这个字很容易联想哦。我们说种什么因得什么果，当你做了什么不好的事，自然会有不好的后果回报给你，挽回给你，对不对？所以这个 retribution 就有报复、报应或是惩罚的意思。好，那么以上是今天重点整理，我们回顾简单字吧。Economic government should work hard to encourage economic growth in their countries. Unique. Some people seem to be born with unique talents. Others work hard to develop their skills. Triumph. Vincent Van Gogh's painting *The Starry Night* is a triumph of modern art. Engineering. Fiona spends a lot of time learning math because she plans to study civil engineering. Intend. The author intended his book to be read by children, but it became popular among adults instead. Expand. After the city became a tourist destination, its government made plans to expand the airport. Contribute. David has contributed significantly to the success of his company. Route. Which is the best route to take through the mountains? Well, everyone, today's article has come to an end, and I sure hope you guys enjoyed reading and learning along with us. I am Jeff. I am Roger. See, See you next time. time.